Hey everybody, this is Max Hawthorne, and instead of the usual photo, I'm going to give you guys a little video intro to a specimen from my display case. We're looking at a beast of a centrum here from a Pliosaurus macromeris. Uh, we'll be going by Tarlow's paper, which does give extensive details on the species and on centra in particular. Uh, let's take a look at the specimen and see what we've got here. Uh, as you can see, the neural arch is completely missing. Uh, we've got on the lateral surface between the superior rib facet and where the arch was, where there aren't concretions, we can see the surface is relatively smooth. Uh, we have dual rib facets on both sides. This is characteristic of pliosaurs. You can see, let me see what we got here. So this is the posterior surface, anterior, so front. So the left rib facets, the superior, is somewhat larger than the inferior, has almost a triangular shape towards the top. Uh, we got a bit of a difference, however. On the other side, the superior is considerably larger, but they're more I don't want to say square, but ovoid in shape. One of the characteristics of these type of vertebrae in this species is that these rib facets actually tend to migrate the further back they go as they approach the body of the animal. So initially, they'll be lower. And then as they move up, they merge instead of two facets, two ribs, they become a singular rib oval and then angle upward from there until they actually merge with the neural arch. Uh, uh, man, this thing's heavy. We have small mammala in the center of each articular surface punctured by nutritive foramina. There is no evidence uh, of a ventral keel, but there seems to be evidence of a ventral lip, characteristic of the species. Another possibility is this could be arthritic changes brought on by injury. Hard to say, but I suspect it's ventral lip. I should point out that the uh, Stratham specimen that Tarla bases paper on came millions of years before this, so obviously some evolutionary changes are probably inevitable. Let's talk size here. So the Stratham Pliosaurus macromeris, uh, according to, oh gosh, Colin Richard McHenry and his dissertation, Devourer of Gods, he estimated the length of the Stratham Pliosaurus, Mat Pliosaurus, I'm sorry, Macromeris, at between 9 and 11 meters. This particular centrum here measures 190.5 millimeters in width. That's some of the rib facets measured across the posterior articulating surface which is what you're looking at right here. It is 71.6 millimeters in terms of length. Per Tarlow, centrum length increases the further back they go. The anterior cervicals are shorter front to back, the closer they are to the head. Uh, anterior cervicals are characteristic as being 50% or less wide as opposed, I'm sorry, long, this way, as opposed to width. So this thing is 71.6 millimeters in terms of length versus 190.5 in terms of width. So obviously that's considerably less than 50%. So we're safe in terms of that. Uh, when I go by Tarlos charts, the Stratham anterior cervical that corresponds best to this specimen would be 35990A, which measures 134 millimeters in width and 65 millimeters in length. At 190.5 millimeters in width, that means that this centrum is 42% larger than the Stratham animal was, or its centrum. 
Centra, excuse me, scaled up from McHenry's estimates. This suggests that the Pliosaur that once owned the Centrum was anywhere from 12.5 to 15.6 meters in length. In USA terms, that means somewhere between 41 and 52 feet in length. Weight estimates at 41 feet, 21 tons to as much as 43 tons at 52 feet. We are talking about a huge animal, ladies and gentlemen, a true beast. And of course, uh, well, I should point out also, though, however, I do have another Centrum in my collection, which is considerably larger than this one. Stay tuned. I look forward to showing it to you. Thanks very much. Have a great night.